Well, in the past week, we built this beautiful application, and now it's time to build a leaderboard to gamify this. So in this video, you're going to learn how to use a group by function and the count rows functions to create a beautiful leaderboard to encourage our employees. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So again, this webinar, we're focused on building a leaderboard for our shout out application. We want to make sure we encourage our employees through this to hopefully, you know, add more shout outs. And it's a great way of doing that is to create our leaderboard also. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use two functions for this. One is, of course, the group by function, which will create a little mini report inside our application. We're also going to use things like count rows. Uh, you could, of course, use sums and all those kind of things once you have your group by function in there as well. So let's go back to our application. And in our last uh, our last video, we went ahead and built this side area here to focus on, on our activity stream. And you can see we have some pictures, some people, some employees that have pictures, some that don't have any pictures. And uh, we have a few uh, kind of uh, test shout outs that we have here. We also added this little filter here as well. So what we're going to use this bottom left area for is we'll select the category of culture that we want to enforce and then see the, the cool shot, cool uh, uh, aggregate stats here. Won't be the prettiest because I want to try to make it really, really stylized here, but uh, there are some neat things we can do inside this. One neat tip we, we learned earlier also is if we select one of these pictures here, uh, one little cool little Power BI hacks, and you see it's giving me all sorts of grief right now. If I select this picture, uh, there's this really cool function here called a border radius or a property here. If I make that like 20, you'll see it kind of rounds the corners. Oh, let, me go, let me go actually it's steady. I'll go 50 here. It's kind of create a little more rounded the corners. So it kind of creates a little more stylized function. So now that we have that style now done, let's go ahead and create our empty gallery first. So let's go to galleries and create just a nice empty gallery. I'll just go, I'll go with the most, uh, the, the plain jane one we have here. All right, kind of create a little more wiggle room here. I'll point this over to our culture shout outs and you'll notice there's nothing going to be inside this. Uh, I'm just doing this so I can kind of kind of help me code what the, uh, what's going to happen next. So we're going to be adding each of these labels manually and then it's just going to have the name of the employee and the number of shoutouts they have by category. So to start with, we're going to use a group by function. And the group by function is going to take our data set culture shoutouts and allow us to kind of aggregate that data for us. So in my case, it's going to feel a lot like SQL Server if you're a SQL Server person. I'm going to do a group by, open parenthesis. We have our culture shoutouts. And then I'm going to specify what do I want to group by on. Uh, I want to group by the name of the employee here. So we'll go ahead and specify uh, nominated. And I'm looking for that nominated uh, one we have. Here we go. Nominated name. All right. That's the name of the employee. And then what name do I want to give this uh, this, this data set, basically? So the data name I'm going to give this is going to call, call this just uh, items by name. And then close a parenthesis. So you'll notice nothing it looks like nothing really happened here in this case. But now we have an aggregate data set that we're now we're going to build upon over and over again inside this video. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and drag our first label inside. Let's go get, let's give this uh, gallery a name. I'll call this uh, Gal Leaderboard. And while that's selected, this is always a tricky part inside of uh, Power Up sometimes, we want to drag this label inside of that and see, it's, see how it is right now? It has to be inside, inside the gallery for it to function. So I'm going to go ahead and select inside the gallery, hit my label, and now it actually works. You're seeing the name of the employees. Now, the, 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 a lot of trickiness here, you have to kind of make sure it's, it's, it's you know, kind of organized appropriately here and it's not gonna be a very pretty report here but we'll we'll get it going here as time goes on all right we have our name now in, in place let's go ahead and add one more label there we go we'll put a put a hit right next to it okay hopefully that's about lined up look for that purple line there we go and now this time we want to get the count of the of the employees so we have our name now we want to go ahead and get the count of the rows that are that are Eat that, that are by that. So if you do count rows, this function, if you look at the top there, it's going to say, look at the look at the data set we have, and for each employee that we have, count the number of rows for that employee. So if I do my items by name, there we go. Close that parenthesis. We're now going to see uh, down below a list of employees 
and the list of uh, by by that by their count. Now we're now notice we are of course going to have to sort this to create a full leaderboard, but you're getting the idea now. So we have our our group by done, our count rows done. Now we need to keep on adding upon that deeper and deeper to kind of make sure that it's uh, that our, our syntax gets a little more complex. But we'll make sure we can actually sort this by the category next. So with the first part done, let me go ahead and expand this a little bit to kind of give us, give us a little more wiggle room. And we now want to go ahead and filter this. So I want to make sure that whatever ca culture category I've selected up top, it's going to filter that. Right now we're seeing a list of shout outs um, enumerated by no category. So now let's go ahead and filter this. And I'm doing a little nested. I'm going to filter my data set and only do this based on the filter. So right after this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my filter right there. So we want to filter this now by the category. So we'll say culture category. This is the name I gave it in SharePoint. All right, it's equal to the gallery culture browse. I, I get a terrible name there, cows, 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 uh, culture category browse one. And dot selected dot title. Okay, and we need to go ahead next let me close that and comma. There we go. So now we're going to get a list of whatever I've selected. And just to kind of prove that out a little bit, let's kind of create a little more wiggle room here and add one more label outside this gallery so we can kind of see what it looks like. So if I were to go and add a label right here, okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and stretch this out full width here. And let's go ahead and say, let's call this just, uh, let's take that out, call cal uh, culture browse dot title, oop, dot selected dot title, excuse me. And let's go ahead and give that a nice uh, fill behind the scenes under the home tab. And let's make the text white and let's fill up that dark blue there as well. All right, cool. And of course, you want to want to center that so we can now see what is selected. Be humble with selected. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a nice uh, center and make it bold and also make it, again, it won't be a, a super pretty report, but you get the idea. So now as I kind of select these, you'll see where is my shout outs going from. Okay, looks like, there we go. Looks like the be humble is where they're, where they're mostly at there. I don't have any shout outs here. So we're gonna do some things to kind of trigger that, uh, that love here. We have one, one employee has had a shout out there. I, of course, have, have some alignment issues I need to address, but you get the idea. Okay, it's not gonna be a perfect report as far as how pretty it is or anything, but it's going to at least get fit the bill as far as what we're trying to go for. So I need to bump that, that number down, looks like. Okay. I need to bump this up. There we go. Now this is where we want to go ahead and use the, the literal positions inside of inside of this now. So we can actually go through and spe specify that this is going to be 50% you know, of my gallery and use literal positions, but we're not going to use to cover that in this. this. It's more about the leaderboard itself. So back here again, uh, now that we have that piece done, uh, we have the filters, looks to be working, so I'm getting no records here. Uh, we need to add now add the sort pieces now to it as well. So we select this filter. Oh, the data set's a little sluggish right now to respond, but you get the idea. Uh, let's go ahead and add a sort function in this now as well. So the sort function is going to uh, make sure that those those high numbers are going to be up top. It just ha so happens that it's it's sorting appropriately right now, but that's not going to be the case normally. So let's go ahead and put a sort by function on this. So I'll call up sort. At the very end, what column we want to sort on? We want to sort based on the uh, items created here, so based on the count number of rows. So I'll do count rows, okay, items by name. And we want to sort this descending. So sort order is going to be descending, dot descending. And then close that parenthesis. All right, so now if I play this, we should now see the top number always is the appropriate number. And you can see it's, it's, it's again, it's behaving sluggishly right now. We've got the little, little, little ants, ants, ants going across the screen right now. So we're gonna keep on moving, assuming it's working, uh, but that's what's happening right now is, is the, uh, it's the load time in SharePoint. It's really sluggish right now, it looks like. But it, it is working, it looks like. 
All right, so with that now done, we now want to add a little more flair to this now. So uh, notice that if, if a customer comes here for the first time, they're not going to have one of these categories selected. So we want to show the all level, you know, show me everything that has been um, that has been given to these employees. So in this case, we want to create a variable that says, uh, on start, it says, hey, nothing is selected at all. And then we're going to update that variable if, if they select anything inside this. And every time they come back to this page, we want to make sure that the all level is again selected. So to do that, I'm going to go to the form level, go to the action, make sure that I select uh, on visible. So the on, I'm choosing on visible versus on start. On start is run once when the application starts. On visible is run every time you come back to this page again. It's going to reset the reset the form again, basically, or reset the get what's selected in the gallery. So in this case, I'll use this update context. Update context is used to uh, to set the value of a variable. In my case, I'll just I'll, I'll piggyback what I've already got here, and I'll just call this uh, var step zero. And I'll call this uh, equal to false. So in other words, when you first come here, uh, set the variable to be equal to false. This felt so means they have not seen any gallery. Now, if they select any item in the gallery, I want to set that variable to true. So I'm going to go on select, make sure you the whole gallery selected, and I'm going to set, set that. Uh, oops, I have already, already done that. Let's go ahead, let me go ahead and do it one more time. Var step zero to be equal to true. All right. So now. They've selected an item. Now I want to go ahead and, sh and choose to either show that or not show that based on that. So we're going to need to modify our uh, our big syntax one more time here. And we'll say, all right, if the variable, OK, I need to kind of put a comma here so I can kind of get some IntelliSense action going. There we go. So if the variable step 0 is equal to true, then go ahead and do this. Now, I don't have to actually type in true because it's, it's implied true like every other Boolean out there. So if it's set to true, then go ahead and run this. Let me go ahead and copy this syntax. I'm going to piggyback this one more time. Else is my comma syntax right there. Run this. So my it looks like my it didn't capture capture that comma there. So run this. So the other piece I need to do is I need to remove the filter. So let me go ahead and take that filter out. Keep the shoutouts and then remove what I'm filtering on. There we go. Well, that's close. Okay. Looks like I've got some code here that's just not quite happy. I can hover over it here. It looks like it's expecting a close parenthesis and it is not right. Okay. We can, we can kind of diagnose that. When we hover over it, we can see that it's not missing a closed parenthesis. It seems to be happy because when I hover over this, we can see it starts right there. So this, to keep my diagnosis time a little low here, let's go ahead and just, and just steal some code here. So that's why we always keep uh, Notepad handy. All right, paste that in. It looks to be happy this time. Uh, I'm not sure what I've missed there, but it looks like it's probably a, a parenthesis based on the error that I had selected there. All right, so now, and I'll do it one more time right here as well. So my be humble, I want to change the syntax of that or the text of that. If I have nothing selected, then go ahead and show that. So if the variable, if the variable, if the variable, come on, there you go. If variable step zero is true, then go ahead and run this. Else we'll show all items. Close parenthesis. So right now, nothing is selected, so we can see all items. Now, when I go and actually select an item, we'll actually see deliver wow. And anytime I come back to this page again, we'll get the, we'll get that as well. So when I first run this, you'll notice it actually doesn't actually run because the, the the on visible is not running inside the designer. So I'm going to kind of simulate that here by going out of the page. Uh, I'll do a quick shout out here. Never stop teaching. Boom, boom, hit send. And now it's going to run that code uh, at this point. That's going to run the invisible code. So for some reason, the designer is just not, when, you, when you're going in and out of the designer, it's just not very uh, responsive in some, some cases. As you can see, it looks like my uh, SharePoint site's a little sluggish right now. And we're seeing the, it, it kind of crawl. Uh, but we do come back. We're seeing all items. And again, if I select this, we're now seeing be humble. So there's a few more little, little uh, you know, 
explanation points we can put on this if we wanted to really uh, really make this a, a prettier app. Uh, if I go out of design mode again, it's, again, still those little ants crossing, cr uh, crawling there. I'm going to put one last uh, uh, label inside of this. And what I'm trying to encourage, if, if nobody's uh, been inside this section right here, for example, I'm trying to encourage people to th think about that cultural item and actually add their own to that. So let me go ahead and add a label. All right. I'll pop that in here. And I'm going to say something like, um, uh, looks like no one has sent a shout out for, and then I'll just do back to my gallery and whatever they have selected. Okay, and then I'll say, you know, why not add one? Okay, so I want this to be front and center. So let's make this a nice uh, bright red front and center to really encourage people to, to add that. Uh, make it bold, make it a little bigger. There we go. Now I only want that to be seen, of course, if there's no items in that category. And I, of course, can make that clickable. I can have an on select somewhere inside this or a button right next to it that shows as well. But we'll keep it simple right now because you get the idea. And the on visible for this is going to be using that variable also. So the on visible in this case, because it's just a, it's a Boolean, all we have to do is reference that variable again, bar step zero. And if it's, if it's true, if it has been selected, then it's going to show. Otherwise, it's not. So unfortunately, I can't quite piggyback it here because if, if a variable has been selected, uh, oh, no, actually, yes, that's not right. Excuse me. I don't want to, that's my, my last one here. So if the number of rows in that gallery, so I'm going to count the rows, and if the number of rows in the gallery, which is called gal leaderboard, leaderboard, there we go. Uh, so the number of, of, of items in that, so I'll just type in all items. There we go, is equal to zero. Then we'll show it, otherwise we won't. There we go. So now as I pop around here, we'll see. Okay, there it goes. Just a little sluggish on the, on the, on the, on the load time right now. So, so it's showing selectively now. So this is a, a way of kind of adding a way we can easily show our users um, you know what's kind of get get the competition going ultimately, and my goal here was to get them you know excited about about our pragmatic works culture. So this is concluding our application essentially. We might add another Power BI report of this, but at this point, need some ideas. So what I what ideas do you have for our next application? Uh, please do add those to the comments down below, and we'll hopefully get to those this week as well. Thank you so much for attending this webinar though today, or this video today on how to make a leaderboard out of your Power Apps application using count count rows and also using the group by function. If you have any questions, please add them in the comments down below. And don't forget, we do offer training, and we also can help you build your own uh, Power Apps application through our managed service. Please do email us if you have any questions on that, uh, or go to pragmaticworks.com. Have a great day. Thank you so much.